we've been looking at making PCB motors. So far, we've got some pretty promising results. We can make a magnet jump around, and we can even make our motor turn. I can drive the motor by just powering the coils in the correct order, and I can also use the nice Arduino library, Simple FOC, in open loop mode. Now, we started off using a two layer board, but decided these were a bit too weak. So we've switched up to a four layer board, and we're also pushing the coils out a bit further. Going to a four layer board should give us double the force from the coils. It will also increase the torque as the coils are further out, and it will let us use larger magnets. So there's quite a few wins from doing this. Once again, it's taken a while to get this video out the door, and PCBWay managed to manufacture and ship the new boards in record time. They're already here. We can now get the motor spinning pretty fast. It's completely bonkers. Thanks once again to PCBWay for sponsoring the channel. Have a look at the services they offer, as they do quite a variety of things. However, we're not really in it for the speed, even though it is quite fun to see how fast the motor will go. What we're really after is torque. One of the questions that has come up from a few watchers is why people building these PCB motors tend to use wedge-shaped coils instead of round coils. It's a pretty interesting question, so let's try and get to the bottom of it. There is a somewhat intuitive answer to the question, which is simply that you can fit a lot more copper on the board if you use a wedge shape instead of a coil. This is particularly true as you try and fit more coils around the circle. So that's the intuitive explanation, but let's try and be a bit more scientific. Now, there is a warning here, I am not a physicist. I gave up on electricity and magnetism in the first year of university. So if there is anyone out there who really knows this stuff well, please let me know in the comments how to do it properly. So first off, let's have a think about what we are trying to achieve. We want to generate a magnetic field that will create a force on a magnet to turn our rotor. This means that what we need to do is create a force in the direction shown on the diagram. The first way to approach this analysis is to try and simulate the fields that are being generated by our coils. Googling around on how to do this took me to this pretty interesting video that explains something called the biot savart law. This in turn led me to some nice Python code that will compute the magnetic field generated by an arbitrarily shaped coil. All you need to do is feed in the points of your coil along with a value for the current flowing through it, and you'll get a 3D space containing your magnetic field. If we simulate our simple spiral coil, we can examine the magnetic field just above the coil. As you'd expect, we have a very strong Z component pointing out from the coil, giving us a north pole. Looking at the X component of the field, we can see that our field is pointing out to the left and to the right of the coil. And similarly, for the Y component, it's pointing up and down. This makes much more sense if we take a side-on look at the coil and take a cross-section through the centre. It's a pretty interesting simulation. We can do the same for our wedge-shaped coil. Here we can see the Z component, so we can see that once again we are getting a strong magnetic field in the Z direction. The X component is once again pointing left and right, and the Y component is pointing up and down. Again, taking a slice through the middle of the coil, we can see something that looks pretty sensible. What's pretty clear from both our coils is that we can easily generate a strong magnetic field in the Z direction. This will either attract or repel the pole of the magnet. The problem is that this strong field is not going to help turn our motor. If anything, it may make it more difficult as our bearing is going to be put under load as the magnets are either pulled or pushed towards the coil in the vertical direction. The only field direction that we're really interested in are the ones that will generate torque on our system and rotate our motor. These will be the components of the field in the X direction pointing left and right. If we ignore the Z and Y components of the field and sum up the negative and positive X component values, we can do a very simple comparison of our coil shapes. With the 6 coil version, there isn't a huge amount of difference. This kind of makes sense as we can have quite large circular coils because we have plenty of space, so we're not going to get much benefit from our wedge shape. However, if we move to the 12 coil version, there's quite a dramatic difference. We're able to fit a lot of radial long wires in our wedge shape version, which gives us a really nice field in the X direction. So, looking at the magnetic fields the coils are generating, we have a pretty clear win for the wedge coils, particularly for the 12 coil version. Alternatively, we can approach this problem from the opposite direction. Given a magnet, what force will be exerted on our coil? To calculate this, we need to know the magnetic field strength and direction being generated by our magnet. Knowing this, we can simulate the force that would be applied to our coil for a given current. So our first challenge is to simulate the magnetic field from one of our magnets. The simplest approach to this would be to model our magnet as a simple dipole. The formula for the magnetic field for a dipole is this. This does look a little complicated to begin with, but it's actually pretty simple. 
The bold R is the vector from the magnet to a point in space. The bold M is the magnetic moment of our magnet. And R is the distance from our magnet. Splitting this formula into the x, y, and z components and making the magnetic moment point in the z direction, we end up with these three simple equations. Using these equations, we can calculate the magnetic field at any point in 3D space. Here's a slice of the field looking side on at the dipole magnet. It looks exactly as you'd expect from your high school physics experiments. And here's a slice of the field looking up at the magnet from below. We can approximate the field from one of our disk magnets by combining multiple dipole magnets together. Here's a simulation where I've used six dipole magnets around the edge of our disk magnet. We could probably get away with just using a simple dipole for our simulations, but it's interesting to try and make it a bit more accurate. To work out the total force acting on our coil from the magnetic flux, we chop the coil into small segments and calculate the force on each individual segment. We can then sum up all these small forces to get the total force acting on the coil. We're trying to work out how well this force will rotate the system, so I thought it would be interesting to simulate the forces generated as a magnet sweeps around the stator. Here's the results for the spiral coil from the six coil PCB, and here's the results from the wedge coil. As we'd expect from our previous simulations of the coil magnetic fields, we don't see that much difference. But if we do the same with the 12 coil PCBs, we can see quite a dramatic difference. We're getting a lot more force applied from our wedge shaped coil compared to the spiral coil. One thing that is very interesting is just how quickly these forces disappear as we move the magnets away from the coils in the z direction. This tells us that we need to keep our magnets very close to the surface of the PCB if we want to get a good amount of force. So hopefully this answers the question of why people go with wedge shaped coils. You can simply fit more radial lines in and the radial lines are the most important part of the coils as they generate fields in the correct directions to create torque. Let me know in the comments what you think of this analysis as I'm sure you've got some thoughts.